Hello everyone and welcome to this set of videos on Archimedes Psammites. Our first question has to be what the title meant. The conventional translation in English is the sand reckoner, in other words someone or something that counts up grains of sand. Well the Greek word pretty certainly didn't mean that, though what it did mean is less clear. A plausible guess is sand dweller, and the one other time the word is used it applies to some species of fish that live in sand on the bed of a river or the sea. Another possibility, at the risk of making this sound a bit like an episode of Friends, is that the title means something like The One with the Sand. Well, if the most likely meaning is Sand Dweller, you might well be thinking why a mathematics treatise would be called that. Archimedes here is asking, what if not only the world known to a turbot, say, but the world known to humans, were entirely filled with grains of sand? How many grains would be enough? How could we describe such a large number. We can't be sure whether the title goes back to Archimedes himself, but it would be quite a humorous use of the word, and that certainly ties in with Archimedes' general approach in this work. He had previously invented a new number system for dealing with numbers above 100 million, or as he would have said, 10,000 times 10,000, and discussed it in a lost work addressed to someone called Zeuxippus, who was probably a fellow scientist, but we don't know much about him. If you then contrast the surviving work, the Psamites, Archimedes is trying to catch the interest of one of his patrons, Galen, who was the regent of Syracuse at the time. And the way he demonstrates the power of his new number system is by relating it to the proverbial idea that there are far too many grains of sand for a human to count. So it's a really engaging way to convey the value of this mathematical idea of a new number system. Broadly, what Archimedes does is come up with a loose upper bound for the number of grains of sand needed to fill the entire universe by dividing a high estimate of the volume of the universe by a small estimate of the volume of one grain of sand. And then he shows that his number system can easily handle such a big number. Uh, as a result of that, the treatise preserves some tantalising information about how Greek scientists of the 3rd century BC were imagining the size and proportions of the universe, and we'll deal with that in the next video. But first, let's look at Archimedes' number system itself. Archimedes starts from the fact that the Greek language had words for 100, 1000 and 10,000, that's a myriad, but it didn't go beyond this. We see this in ancient counting boards, and in this case a painting of one, where M for myriad is the highest column. To describe what we would call a million, you would have to use a word meaning a hundred times and say a hundred lots of a myriad, and that's more or less how you still say it in modern Greek. Archimedes therefore considered that the existing language could cope well with numbers up to a myriad lots of a myriad, or in our terms, 10 to the power 8, 100 million. To go beyond this, Archimedes proposes that we call 100 million the unit of a new class of number, which he calls second numbers. For example, 200 million would be two second numbers. Then 10 to the power 8, 100 million second numbers, becomes the unit for the class of third numbers, and so on. Well, Archimedes' idea translates very well into modern base 10 notation, though it's important to bear in mind that the ancient Greeks didn't use base 10 in quite the thoroughgoing way that we're used to, so his system was a lot less obvious than it might look today. If you chop up a big number into eight-digit chunks, starting from the end, each chunk is going to correspond to a different class of number, and its contents say how many units of that class you have. So let's take an example. In my videos on the cattle problem attributed to Archimedes, I interpret that poem to involve the number 10316364990435504. So to express this in Archimedes terms, we split it up, not in groups of three, which we tend to do today, but like this, um, in groups of eight, and we call it one third number plus 316 myriads, 3,649 second numbers, plus 9,043 myriads and 5,504 first numbers. So in general in this system, an nth number is going to translate into 10 to the power of 8 times n minus 1. 
And the largest number we can describe so far is a myriad lots of a myriad of the numbers from the myriad lots of a myriad class, which would be 10 to the power of 800 million. But then Archimedes went even further than that. He says, well, call what we've seen so far the first circuit or the first period of numbers. So its top becomes the unit for the first numbers of the second circuit. Like any unit in the system, we can have up to 10 to the power 8 of them. Um, so we reach the second numbers of the second circuit and so on. And we can go all the way up talking about 10 to the 8 circuits. So in this grid, after the first box, which can be a 1, we have... 10 to the power of 8 rows, and each row has 8 times 10 to the power of 8 columns. The rows are the circuits, and the columns are the classes of number, each of which can contain 8 digits. So the largest number that we can express then, uh, a myriad lots of a myriad of the myriad lots of a myriad class of the myriad lots of a myriad circuit, is going to be 10 to the power of 8 times 10 to the power 16. Now, of course, you could add further levels to this system and keep going if you wanted to, but Archimedes decided to leave it there. So that's his system for describing huge numbers. I hope you'll continue on to the next video where I'll be discussing how he went on to estimate a number of grains of sand that would more than fill the universe. And we'll find out whereabouts it falls on this scale from 1 to 10 to the power of 8 times 10 to the 16. Thank you.